All right, and continuing on from uh, switching operations in chapter 13, we're on chapter 14 now, enhanced switching operations. Um, so we'll start off talking about enhancements to spanning tree, and I kind of touched on this uh, briefly here and there in the last chapter. Um, STP has very few flaws actually, but the, the two most prominent are, and this again was discussed previously, it can take up to 50 seconds to converge in forward frames following a topology change, um, and it takes 30 seconds for a newly connected port to function because of the listening and learning states. So, you know, 50 seconds you've got, if a link doesn't go down directly, but you have a malfunctioning switch, it can take uh, 20 seconds, basically 10 missed 2 second BPAUs from that switch to determine that it's dead. And then you've got the, uh, the 15 seconds of listening and learning, totaling up to 50 seconds potentially before it um, totally reacts to its apology change, which is uh, really, really long in the networking world. You probably get two, three calls from end users already reporting problems. Um, so Cisco improved upon the STP design, and eventually a new open standard uh, known as Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol was released um, based on some of those improvements. Some of Cisco's additions were port fast, uh, BPDU guard, uplink fast, and backbone fast. Um, so starting off with uh, port fast and BPDU guard, these, uh, these pertain specifically to access ports or data ports where you've got like a computer or something connected. So uh, data ports have 30 seconds, 15 seconds listening, and 15 seconds of learning before they can send frames after a new device is connected. Um, after configuring port fast on an interface, it completely skips the listening and learning stages. Um, the listening and learning stages are actually only pertinent if you're connecting to another switch, so that you're because you're basically trying to prevent a, a, a switching loop. So if you've just got a single device on there, you're not worried about a, a loop um, because it's just going to be a single MAC address. Um, again, so in that same line, this should only be configured on access ports, and you should never ever connect a switch or hub to a port fast port. Um, because it's it's basically going to skip those stages. If you do have a switcher hub there, it can actually definitely, almost definitely cause a, a problem with a loop. Um, so what Cisco did is they went actually a step further and blocked all ports configured with port fast from sending BPDUs, a BPDU guard. Um, so it's only going to receive those BPDUs from a, a, a switch. So if it can't if it can't receive them, it's it's not going to happen. If a port fast port receives a BPDU. The port is immediately shut down and must be manually re-enabled by an administrator. So think of this as, um, you know, you've got a large office <coughs> with, uh, you know, a lot of different users. You want to configure, you want to set up port fast on the individual user port so that they can connect immediately. They don't have that 30 seconds of waiting and potentially thinking something's wrong. Um, but you also don't want anyone to uh, basically possibly hack into your network or damage your network by connecting it, an unauthorized switch in there. So in the event that someone does, you have some kind of untrustworthy employee there, hacker otherwise, does connect a, a switch, it's going to immediately shut down that port. Administrator is going to uh, have a, an easy time narrowing down who it was because they're going to have to manually re-enable that port before it's ever going to pass traffic again. Just trace it down to the user that uh, put that unauthorized switch there. Um, so another, <coughs> another addition is uplink fast. Um, in a well-designed switching network, access layer switches uh, would have redundant links to distribution layer switches. So um, previously, several chapters ago, we talked about their, their three-layer hierarchy where you've got your, your core layer up here, which isn't in, in the picture. Um, you've got your distribution layer, and then you've got your access layer where all the individual um, you know, end users and stuff connect to a switch. Um, in, this, in this scenario, we're only talking about just the, the distribution and the access layer. So, if a root port were to fail, it would still take at least 30 seconds um, divided between listening and learning before the backup link would forward. Um, by configuring uplink fast, um, it skips that delay. Um, uplink fast requires direct knowledge of a failure. So in the event that um, the root port on this switch to the root bridge were to fail, it's going to skip that 30 seconds and immediately realize that this is its, its back door to the root bridge and take that path. Now, Backbone Fast uh, works very similarly to that, but it does not require direct um, direct knowledge of a failure. So this is basically the, the exact same setup, except instead of the failure happening here, where this switch can see it immediately, 
it's going to happen up here where it's not necessarily going to immediately be able to, to uh, detect the topology change. So backbone first works similarly at uplink fast, but doesn't require direct knowledge of the failure. In the scenario below, the access layer switch would immediately transition from blocking to listening. Um, a BPD would make it from the access switch to the disconnected distribution switch and realize it has a path to the network. Um, so that, that's basically the, the difference between uplink fast and backbone fast, which perform a very similar function, but still have a, a slight difference between the two, basically where the, the knowledge of the failure occurs. Um, so for configuring Cisco uh, enhancements to STP, um, and again, like when we start talking about rapid spanning tree, these changes are already involved with rapid spanning tree, so you only actually have to configure these changes if you're running a, a pure STP switching network. Um, but those changes to configure, uh, first of all, jump into your interface, so in this case, interface fast, fast Ethernet 0 slash 3. To configure uh, port fast, it's just spanning dash tree port fast. And if you want to add BPU guard on there to uh, make sure it gets disabled if the switch does get connected, spanning dash tree BPU guard enable. Uh, exit out of there. And then if you want to, that's just to configure it um, for a, a particular port. If you want to, um, you know, for, that's for that's for port fast and BPU guard. So it's only going to pertain to a particular port. Uplink fast and backbone fast are going to pertain to the entire switch. So those are uh, configured from global configuration mode. Spanning dash tree uplink fast and spanning dash tree backbone fast. Simple as that. Uh, to enable BPDU guard globally, um, like if you were setting up port fast on individual ports but didn't want to have to set the second spanning tree BPDU guard enable line, you want that set on every one of them. From global configuration mode, uh, spanning dash tree port fast BPDU guard default. Um, so another uh, another Cisco enhancement was um, Ether Channel. Ether Channel allows you to combine links into a virtual link with more bandwidth. Um, this prevents useful links from being blocked because they are no longer perceived as a potential loop. Um, so like right here, we've got two two switches that have four uh, physical links connecting between them. The way STP works, it, normally without Ether Channel enabled. It's going to have to pick one of these ports to uh, to be the main path between them. That way, you don't have a switching loop basically between these two, where you, you're basically sending BPD or uh, frames back and forth between each other. Well, by by doing that, it, it prevents the the switching loops, but it also um, keeps a lot of potential bandwidth uh, bobbled up here because you, instead of having four link four 100 megabit links. That, that communicate between each other. You've only got one that's actually in use. So Ether Channel basically takes all of those links, makes them a single logical channel, and allows them to be a, a single looked at as one single logical path between the two switches. Um, Ether Channel also recognizes if one of the segments in the bind drops and redistributes frames among the remaining links. So in the event you have just a single one or two of these drop. It's going to also see that, and it's not going to keep forwarding frames to those dead links. It's going to see that, okay, well, I've only, I'm down to two links in this Ether channel now. I can only send to those two.